show on the Battle Chats Network. It's the Not Mr. White Show on Battle Chats. Not Mr. White is a comedian, <laughs> filmmaker, I'm just a red-blooded, bald-headed man, and a world traveler who loves nothing more than a great adventure. He has dedicated his life to making mistakes. At that point, I knew I was fucked. So you don't have to. Learn from my mistakes. These are his stories. This is the Not Mr. White Show. Leave your message for Richard Hurd. Hey, Richard, it's from Battle Chats. We had a scheduled interview, so I'm hoping that it's still a good time for that. Please give me a call back when you have a moment. And let's just go ahead and stop the tape right there because I'm not going to give my phone number out over the air, you know, over the show. YouTube, put it out on the interwebs, because A, I'm not an idiot, you know, and two, if you're listening to the show, you probably already have my number, because you're, you're like a family member or something. Anyway, in this week's show, I interview, you know, an actor I've been a fan of for a long time, Richard Hurd, you definitely recognize him from, Yahoo! <coughs> Woo! Yeah, that was a real sneeze. Uh, yeah, Richard Hurd, look, we're just going to get into the the interview. This is the, you know, Not Mr. White show. This is episode, we don't, we're not going to number it. We're just going to call this episode the Richard Hurd interview. How about that? So, here you go. This is Casey Black from Hello. Battle Chats. Oh, Casey, you know how it came up on my line? How'd it come up? It came up as a scam. Oh. It came up as a scam. Oh, I see. See what but happens. You're, not a, you're a regular guy. You're not a scam, <laughs> are you? Yeah, what, what happens Wait is... Wait till I walk into the other room. I'm going to walk into the other room. Excuse me. Okay. You can hear me getting up. So we're going to cut out of the interview for a second. We're, we're actually going to do that quite a bit listening to this because I do have some commentary on it. But first off, I mean, Richard reminds me a lot of my of my grandpa, which is, you know, makes sense because Richard is in his 80s. He's a white male in his 80s. So is my grandpa. And it just, even from the very beginning, like when he, how he picks up the phone, you know, hello, who's this? Uh, I, I felt right at home. So... <laughs> We, we're just going to go right back to the interview, and uh, again, I'm going to be cutting in and out with some with some commentary here and there, but uh, let's continue with Richard Hurd. You just tell me when you're ready. You ask me any question you want except my private life. Uh, okay, no no private life? Uh, you know, private life comes and goes. What can I tell you? I'm a happily married man. We just uh, celebrated 40 years, and... The smartest decision I ever made was to marry my lovely wife. Oh, that's really sweet, Richard. I didn't I didn't know about that actually because I I did a little research online. Um, yeah. So that's obviously yeah, private. Well, yeah, Patricia and myself between us we have three children. I'm getting up in years. My son will be sixty on the ninth of October, and uh, I'm in my mid eighties, so I'm still here. Can I, Richard? Is it okay to ask you about your? Um, when we get to that point, I, I you a little... can ask me anything. Ask me anything. Okay, and then you can just say if you don't want to answer it. That's great. Cool. Well, it's so... a name like Casey. You must have some Irish blood running through your head. <laughs> you, you know I do. You know it. Well, I'm a Boston guy from the south end of Boston. So you got, uh, you're Irish then. Who? Uh, yeah, an Irish and German, and I I studied. Uh, both involved. I did a lot of community theater, but you tell me when you want to start. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick a quick intro, and then we'll we'll go for it. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> All right. He's an actor whose credits include Seinfeld, Get Out, and The Mule. He's a writer. 
He's a National Broadcaster Hall of Fame inductee for his work in old time radio. I could go on, and and I will. He's the former National VP for the Screen Actors <laughs> Guild. <laughs> you know, I'm wondering what he hasn't done, and of course, I'm I'm very pleased to welcome to the show, Mr. Richard Hurd. Thank you for being on. Well, thank you so much for calling me. I, uh, yes, I when I was young, I apprenticed while I was still in the uh, Boston English High School, and uh, by the time I got to my apprenticeship, I I graduated. What was that? I, I think it was 1952 or whatever. So I, I came out of school with my equity card. I was already a member of the union because in an apprenticeship, you do two years apprenticing. All right, so I'm going to pop back out again. Uh, some hosts, you know, maybe, maybe would dislike a a guest like this because they, you know, they kind of talk over the questions and they just kind of go off uh, without any kind of direction of where the interview is headed. But not me. I, I love this. Uh, you know, I really enjoy interviewing Richard because he goes from, you know, saying before it even starts, he says, don't ask me any questions about my personal life. But then all of a sudden we know that he's been married for 40 years. We know uh, how many kids he has, all their ages. We know their favorite breakfast cereals. He's he's opening up without even really being prompted. And then, then he says, like, you know, you can ask me anything that you want. Uh, you know, and then before I even ask a question at the beginning of the, the interview, he just kind of goes off on... Uh, you know, talking about uh, an, an apprenticeship of, of some sort. I didn't know if he was like a, a you know, a cobbler or a, 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 a not not blacksmith, but I don't know what what do people apprentice for? Um, a, you know, watchmaker or something. I I don't know, but uh, we we find out as the interview goes on. Stick around; it gets great. So my start in the world was strictly in the theater. In, in the Boston area, I went to BU and I decided I wanted to go down to New York and study. So I, I, I think I walked in the front door and out the back and went down to New York, got a job, a night job at Carnegie Hall, ushering. And during the, the day, I studied with uh, Andy Meisner, uh, Lee Strasberg, uh, and also I took vocal lessons and I took dance lessons. All of these things you had to do to, uh, you know, because of the theater in New York, off-Broadway, on-Broadway, sing, when these auditions came up. And there were no uh, no electrical devices, no microphones, no this, no that. This is just really awesome interview so far. You know, Richard is giving us a history of the theater and what it takes to be a successful actor i mean he talks about you know acting singing dancing you know who you you tell you think brad pitt can dance or sing okay you know you think uh who else is hot right now you uh, you think shia labeouf can dance he act, he can dance that's a bad example he can dance but the point is you don't have a lot of, uh, you know, multi-talented, triple, quadruple threats out there anymore who can act, sing, and dance. Richard Hurd, he's the real shit. Going back to the interview. Well, I'll give you an example. I, uh, I'm trying to remember his name. I used to play pool with him down at the Players Club. He Ooh. originally produced My Fair Lady. Uh, it was $100,000. He did a, He did a revival 10 years later with Ian Richardson. It was a million. So there's the jump. Right. Now, when we did Get Out, you know, the film Get Out, they budgeted that they don't do pictures for over $5 million. And we went down to Alabama because they get a 35% rebate on every penny you spend in the state. And we did uh, we did it there. It came up. As you know, it was a hit, big hit. I love so it. So they... Uh, yeah. Yeah, they made like, uh, they're close to $300 million uh, in, in profit. That's amazing. For that. Yeah, you know, you, a lot of companies, that's what they do. Uh, you know, it can be done. And that's a, that's a perfect example. I mean, you know, again, continuing with this, this history lesson of the theater and film and, you know, budgets and things like that. It can be done. Uh, you know, and Get Out is a perfect example of that. Back to the interview. 
And we they had a lot of stars, too. You know, we worked uh, Bill Shatner did a couple and blah, 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 blah. And I had worked with Bill for three years. I played his um, commanding officer in T.J. Hooker. So, yeah, you know, he was a pretty good guy. Yeah. So you like Bill Shatner? Yeah, well, you know, he's a hard-working actor. I, he's a, a very, he has a big heavy theater background. He works at 100%. And he, you know, he delivers, and he never stops working. It's just remarkable. The man just goes on and on. And uh, you know, I, I've worked with God. What can I tell you? China Send, and you know, uh, Michael Douglas, uh, Jane Fonda, Jane. Yeah. Uh, oh, and a great guy from my part of the country, Jack Lemon. He's from uh, Oh, absolutely, just yeah. outside of Boston. I think he's from Needham. Needham. Wonderful guy. I did a I did a film with his son too, who is now moved back east. Then I did China Syndrome for Norman uh, Jewish, and it was a wonderful experience. That was with Jane Fonda, experience. Michael Douglas. Yeah, and I'll tell you, recently for me, it's been like, was it Get Out, Shameless. The Mule. Then I did a, ba- I did a baseball film that hasn't come out yet about the, uh, the, uh, the it's called The Silent Natural, and it's about the first deaf professional baseball player who had a lifetime average of 298. And hmm. uh, that was quite an experience. So I did some research after the interview. You know, I didn't want to be embarrassed in front of Richard by not knowing this, uh, you know, something about sports. But it turns out that 292 or 298 or whatever he said is a pretty good average uh, for a deaf person in baseball. And to, to be honest with you, I don't know how much of a handicap that is in baseball. I mean, I guess I guess it is, right? It's legitimate handicap, I guess, in baseball. Anyway, we're going we're gonna to go on with the interview. Here you go. All this time that you spent, you know, in the theater, you know, perfecting your craft, apprenticeship as a young man, it kind of, it brings up a question to me, because it relates to my to my own life, you know, I know that, I mean, it's obvious, right? P- previous generations of of men, um, especially from Boston, <clears throat> you know, right? They're, they're more rugged. They're more manly. Did you ever, you know, were, were you ever, like, made fun of or looked down upon by friends or family for, for spending so much time in the theater? Or were you, was it generally accepted? Well... I, I came from, uh, I never missed a meal, but we lived in the south end of Boston. It was just about a block, a block and a half from the Bowery. And, uh, you know, I had my nose cut a couple times and this and that. But, you know, there'd be little fights and so forth. But people, people wouldn't kill you. Today, they, they, they kill people. And I went to school and so forth. Yeah, my, uh, <laughs> well, I'll give you, for instance, um, it was a young gal I really liked. She was a church gal. And my mom and dad used to rent a place, a little cottage down in Hingham, Massachusetts, right next to the ocean. And uh, we'd get about a week down there. And so you met a lot of people, young people. It was summer and so forth. And I met this wonderful gal. And um, uh, she said, my, my mom and dad want to meet you. So uh, I, I went through that and... Uh, Father called me in, and uh, he said, "Is that what you want to do the rest of your life? You know, an actor, and so forth, and so on." He said, "Well, I don't want you. I don't want you to. I don't want. We don't want that in our lives. And uh, I would appreciate it if you would cut off this connection you established with my daughter. We have other plans for her." Wow. Uh, no, I I came across a lot of uh, that's when I, I I you know phonetically, and I st- I took speech class and. Uh, you know, I do, I've done in films, I've done Swedish, I've done English, I've done German. And when I really work, at, I can, you know, I've done Shakespeare. I can, I can, but, you know, when you're young like that, you know, you have the Boston accent, you have the, you know, with the shots and the different lobsters and things like that. You know, you have to work hard to get anybody, any actor that has a strong accent. You, you look for just kind of a general English-speaking you know, like everybody else talks. 
Right. And then when you have to do the other parts, it, but there is, and there was a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of people in Boston that looked down their nose. They looked down their nose at you. And you think Richard let that get him down? You know, being called a sissy. Hey, sissy boy, actor, you know, while he's walking past the schoolyard. Those bad Boston boys picking on him. He showed them. He has the last laugh. Ha! Moving on. You know, one of the things, actually, that... Eh, well, until I <laughs> until I talked to you and found out more about your background, I saw that, that, you know, the first, you know, film that you were in, the first credit, anyway, that you have was when you were 38. Hercules in New York with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I said... Oh, God, yes. God bless him. God. Well... I don't, yeah, that that came about. It was originally called. I had a couple of days on. I played like a Johnny Carson guy, and there was a bodybuilding contest, whatever. It was a wonderful job. He was a wonderful guy, and uh, he didn't quite speak the English. And uh, they dubbed him, as a matter of fact. And his sidekick was Arnold Arnold Strang. Is that his name? Arnold Arnold whatever. Strong. But I had uh, Arnold what? Arnold Strong, I think. Arnold Stang, is it? A small fellow. Anyway, very good actor. They had a lot of theater actors in that. And we did it. And, you know, it didn't too, to, uh, do to Aubrey somebody uh, kept the rights to it, film. And uh, when Arnold got into, like, uh, the first two movies he did, and then once he did Barbarian, and he became like, uh, a worldwide up. star, more or less. Our, this fellow, Osprey, still had the, the film, and he took it, and he changed it to uh, Hercules Goes Bananas, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. So by then, Arnold was a, a star. So right. he re-released it, and he made, he made a pile of money. He made a pile of money. But you know, this is America, and it is so great that a man like that can come to our country, work hard, and, you know, become the governor of a state, marry into the Kennedy family. He was a very smart man, you know. He, real estate was where he put his money. Sometimes he'd win, sometimes he'd lose. But, you know, that it, it's, it's still that kind of country. You know, that, it's just amazing. Don't you agree? Absolutely. And I'm, I'm very proud of, of Arnold, you know, being the, being the governor of California. I'm actually very proud to say also yeah. that when I when I graduated UCSB, you know the the chancellor of the university and also the state governor, whoever it is at that time, signs your degree, your or your de- or yeah, yeah, your degree, and really? Arnold yeah. Arnold signed mine. Oh my god! So I got my degree while Arnold oh, was governor. Well, now, would, would, let me you you can do me a favor. I want you. I have. I think I have one or two pictures. Of myself with Arnold. You'd like to have that, wouldn't you? Absolutely, yeah. Now, uh, I don't want the, everybody in the world, when we go off, I'll give you my uh, my email number. Okay. And you can send me your address, your, your land address and all that stuff. And I'll, you know, within a week or so, I'll, I'll dig one out and I'll send it off to you. Oh, that'd be awesome. I'd really appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. You, that's that's incredible. It's just incredible. You know, life, you just don't really know what's around the corner. And that's going to do it for the Richard Hurd interview. At the present time, I have yet to receive the photograph of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Richard Hurd. I have no doubt that it is in the mail. You know, Richard is a very sweet guy. I believe he's sincere. And, uh, you know, above all, the lesson here really is, you know, truly hard work and dedication does pay off. The man spent his, you know, majority of his childhood uh, training in theater, singing, dancing, acting, learning how to project, project, project and dialect, you know, and it's paid off. He just has, has never stopped working. He's committed to his craft and... 
from what he says, you know, anybody, anybody can do this with the right mindset and with the right, you know, hard work and determination. So I want to say thanks again for uh, the interview, Richard Hurd. You're probably listening to this right now with your, uh, your wife and your kids, and you can tell them from me that uh, their dad, their husband, et cetera, is a, is a standout guy. And, uh, you know, again, looking forward to receiving that photograph with you and Arnold Schwarzenegger. I will be updating the status of that on future shows. Okay, so from Not Mr. White to all the fans, stay safe, you guys, and I will see you guys on a future episode. Thanks.